Cricket bars. They're like regular health bars, except they've got crickets in them. All the reindeer are nestled safely in their beds. Hi. So today we're going to tackle um, putting the carry mechanism back into the frame. And we've got all the parts laid out for that. This was in uh, bag seven, and the removal was described at the end of video five. So we're gonna do that, and, because that's probably gonna be easy, we're also gonna go with putting together all the stuff that's in bag six. And this is probably gonna be the most um, difficult part of um, putting the thing back together again, I think. Um, that's my suspicion. So anyway, um, let's get started. So this is the carry mechanism. Uh, we didn't take it apart uh, because I felt that uh, it didn't really require much cleaning and we're not totally reverse engineering the thing so we don't really need to take apart every single bit and piece. The only thing that you should note is that um, this part is movable. There's also this other part thing which is movable as well. Um, the gear is basically pinned into place. Um, and then we have these things which are called dogs for whatever reason, I don't know why, but they basically move back and forth and they're uh, spring-loaded. So um, we're definitely going to want to oil those, but first, put this back on. So um, the first thing that we, uh, that we, or the last thing that we did, was we took this uh, bushing off of this axle. Um, and I guess it's important to note that the bushing has a thick side and a thin side, so we need to know which side, uh, which way it goes onto the axle. And the orientation is the thick part goes this way, so away from the mechanism. Um, there's a similar bushing right in here, and I can move this bushing. Um, it's a bit stiff, so I'm probably gonna put some oil in there. Um, the point is that the bushing goes into these semicircular depressions over here. Um, so let's go get my oil and put some on the axle here. And that's probably sufficient. So now I'm just doing that, distribute the oil. That moves very nicely. Um, I'm going to put some oil in here kind of in the hopes that it'll help. Um, I'm not sure how, how much help it's going to be. So also this part should be oriented up when we put this in. Okay. All right, that fits quite nicely in there. See, that's how it goes. Oh yeah, that's important. Um, we need to make sure that the, that the timing marks are correct. So let's see where the timing marks are. Uh, let's see. I'm going to rotate this until I see the timing mark. It's kind of hard to see. Ah, there it is. There's the timing mark. And now I'm going to rotate this until I see the corresponding timing mark, which think is right here on the blackened part and they just sort of go together like this. Just like that. Okay, now the arrows point to each other. So now I'm just going to check these gears, okay, and I notice that the timing marks don't point to each other, which means that I have to use the other timing mark here, this one. So let's put that in again. Boy, I hope, uh, hope you saw all that. Oops, okay. So, let me align 
align the timing marks on these two gears. Okay. And now I can just go ahead and line these two marks together. Is it correct? It seems correct to me. Um, now I'm not sure anymore. Now I'm doubting myself. Because, I mean, the, the, the arrows do align. They don't align at the same time. And I'm wondering if that's uh, I'm wondering if that's a problem. What I could do Okay, I know what I can do. Um, what I can do is I can put the uh, carry gear on and not worry about the timing. Then I can remove the middle gear and align it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so um, not that big a deal. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the parts. Um, we had two different brackets. One of them had a hole on it. The one with the hole goes on this side. Um, let's get some oil on the bearing surface. So that would go just like that. And it would get screwed in by um, one of these screws. Um, we've got four of them. So let's just go ahead and do that. Oil the thread, put the screw in, oil the thread, and put the screw in. And again, I'm just oiling the thread so that um, there will be at least a little bit of protection against rust. Why isn't this going in? There we go. Okay, so I'm not really going to tighten that down. Just to fix it in place. Now this one Okay, I'll just put some oil in there, even though I think I already did. And then we've got this bracket, which goes in here, along with the two screws. So I'm going to do it this way. Magnetic. I'm just going to do this. Okay, now I should 
just be able to tighten it down. Tighten this side down. quite nicely and quite freely as well. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the clip from the center gear. Let's see if I can lower the, uh, the camera a bit to get maybe a better angle. Maybe even lower. That might work. Okay, there we go. So, I'm not even sure you can see the timing marks. They're kind of hard to see even in person rather than on the video. So I remove, now my hand is in the way, oh well. So I'm removing the clip. Well, the clip was very easy to get on, there we go. Okay, so removing the clip, removing the washer, and removing the gear, there we go. So, um, so the question is, uh, which way does the gear go? I forgot to turn on the light. There we go. Oh, even I can see. Okay, so. Um, so I'm going to find the arrow, which is really hard to see. Where is that arrow? Here it is. Okay, so there's the arrow. What I should do is maybe try to remove the gunk from the mark. And it's easier to see. Okay. So there's this arrow. And this arrow I know is over here. So the question is, if I take this arrow and align it, will it, oops, will it align, great. If I align these two arrows like that, see, and there's another arrow that points up. And then I find this arrow that does line up. Okay. So it was a good thing. Oops, darn it. I think that's it. Yep, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's it. Wonder if I'm off by one tooth. I'm not really sure. Um, but I think that's the correct way. Um, this arrow is pointing up, these two arrows are pointing at each other, and these two arrows are pointing at each other. So the only question is if I'm off by one tooth or not. Um, it's really hard to tell. It's really, really hard to tell because the arrows 
don't exactly mark up uh, line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on this and move this down by one tooth and see. That certainly isn't right. So let me adjust this by one tooth and put it back. That does seem that does seem right to me. Okay. All right. I think I'll uh, I think I'll leave it like that. So. So we've got these two arrows, these two arrows, and this arrow points up. So I'm just going to go ahead and clip the central wheel back, just like that. And there we go. That should, in theory, move the gears in the way they're supposed to. So when this arrow is up, these arrows are together, and these arrows are together. Um, and that should be that. So uh, let's see. We've got this together. We've got this together. So now um, let, me, uh, let me see. All right. So we've got a section here. And let me just raise the camera a bit. OK. So we've got this part here. And as well, we've got this other funny part here. And I think they go together. And the idea is that there is this bushing here, which goes on, there's a, a slot here. And that bushing goes into that slot. This screw goes in this way. And then this nut is on the other side. So the question is, where does it go? Because I see two holes here. Uh, actually, I see a third hole here, but this bushing isn't going to fit there. So it's either going to be here or here, one of these two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if this screw fits in both holes. Well, OK, so this screw actually screws in, but there wouldn't be a need for the nut if the screw screws in, which means that it must go in this hole here. So let me go ahead and attempt to put the bushing in there. It's kind of tough. So what I can do is I can sort of put the bushing here and then put it in. Good. And then slide it. Good. And now it's sandwiched between the frame and the part. So, and uh, which hole did we decide it was going into? This bottom one. So I'm just going to take this and move it there. Okay. So the question is, what about what about this fork thing? Um, I'm going to check the video and see what the purpose of that is. Whether whether it actually goes in here or not. Because if it does. If it does, that means that this goes like this. And then like that. 
but I'm not so sure. And the answer is uh, no. In fact, the screw does not touch that part. So it's just like that. Just like that. And then I take the nut. And actually, before I do that, let me take the oiler and put some oil on that bearing surface. Then I can put the nut on because my fingers are a little too fat. Gonna do that. And then I'm going to screw this on. It's difficult. Ah, oh, there we go. help if, is if I had a small screwdriver, but I don't, so maybe I can just use the bit and just sort of hold on to this side while I tighten this side. Yeah, that kind of works. All right. So now when I rotate this, you can see that this thing sort of moves up and down. Like that. All right. So that is that part. So the next section is we've got six to put together all these parts. All right, so the next thing is that we're going to put this axle together along with all of these parts and I've laid them out in the same order that we took them off um, according to uh, video 5. So uh, the first thing that goes on is this uh, lever thing and it goes on this way, not this way, um, and with the axle such that this nut is facing to the left. So that goes on like that. Then we get a spacer. Goes on like that. Then we get uh, this plate. And the plate goes on the axle small hole. And in addition, this tab goes to the rear. So it's like this. like that, and then a spring. So we have spring, lever, spacer, plate. Spring, lever, Spacer plate with the tab to the back. So um, after I put this together, I think there's another part that was from the bag. Um, and then it all goes together. And then I'll oil the whole thing because I think these are all rotational parts. So they will all need oil so that they all move smoothly, and don't rust. The thing is, if you look at this, you can see that there's obviously a coating on it. Um, and I don't know what that coating is. Um, I'm pretty sure that zinc uh, looks kind of like chrome. Um, it looks shiny. And this is not shiny. So I'm not sure that this is a zinc coating. And um, the purpose of a zinc coating or some other coating, see, this is, this is really dark. Um, it's not shiny at all. But you can see that, you know, some of the some of the shiny steel underneath is showing through. Um, and the purpose of that coating is basically uh, sacrificial. I, I, I probably mentioned this before, but uh, I'll mention it again. Um, so when you plate zinc 
onto steel um, rather than the iron in the steel oxidizing, the zinc will oxidize first. Um, and the zinc doesn't even have to coat the entire thing. It can just uh, it can just be on a portion of it. And apparently, because of the way that electrons move from iron to zinc, um, even if a part of the iron would normally rust, the electrons causing that will go to zinc. And then the zinc will actually rust first, uh, which is kind of cool. Maybe the other direction. Maybe the electrons go from zinc to, uh, to iron. Doesn't matter. The point is that the zinc uh, is the thing that gets the rust. OK, so that's the lever. Um, so the next part, uh, I think there is um, another axle that um, has parts that go into these individual grooves. Um, and then we will see where we get to. And here are the next series of parts. Um, we also have this, uh, which actually went on the end of the axle. So I'll just sneak it on there. Um, OK, so we have uh, seven of these uh, plates, which have small pins. We have one, which has a large pin over here. And we have one, which has no pin. And according to the video, uh, the one with the large pin goes all the way on the left side. Then you get all the ones with the small pins. And then you get the one with no pin, and that goes all the way on the right side. So um, these things fit in the grooves, just like that. So and they're not, yeah, they're not going to stay on. Um, so I'm just going to sort of hold them on like that. Um, and it's also important to note that the tab faces that way, to the right, just like that. So um, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and just stick it in like that. And I'm going to move these parts over. Let's see, is that the right way? And then another thing like this, and then the lever. So I'm wondering, because this can go like this based on the pin. It's probably like this. I think that's the way it was. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that it went like this, um, because in fact, I think this will actually hook onto something else. So let's uh, let's leave it like this. Okay. So let's get the spacer plate. So let's see what we've got. We've got a lever, a spring, a plate, and a spacer which is now spring-loaded. So now I'm going to put the plate in here. Oh, that's nice. It actually holds the plate in place. Lever, spring, plate, spacer, other plate. 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 Lever, spring, plate, spacer, other plate, and then 
lever, spring, plate, spacer, other plate with a big pin, and then lever. So I think that's pretty much the sequence. Right? Right. Now, according to the video, um, the pulleys basically go in the spaces between. So the spring goes through the hole like that. And then there's a pulley that goes over the end. Okay. Then it goes through the large hole of the plate, through the small hole of the next plate, and then we get another pulley. So it seems that there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pulleys. Uh, I have six, and I know that um, in the previous bag there were some more. Let me just uh, make sure that that's actually correct. Uh, let's see, bag three, bag five, here we go. Uh, and in bag five, I'm looking for pulleys and I do see two. Uh, actually, I see three, okay. I guess there would be a pulley over here. That makes nine total. So um, that's good to know. We have all the parts, it's always a good thing. So let's uh, go ahead and thread all of these parts in. Um, Okay, it's a little difficult to do. I suppose it would help if I could actually pull, there, I can pull the spring through. So now here's a pulley. And then I push, and then I can pull the the spring through the next small hole, and then I take another pulley and jam it onto the end, and push it through the large hole, pull it through the small hole, a little more. Put the pulley on. There's a screw here. Where'd that come from? That's pretty scary. Um, huh. Where did that come from? All right, let me put that in bag six. Unless it actually came out of, yeah, it came out of bag five. Bag five has a hole in it. So that's not good. So I've gotta be careful of bag five. In fact, I'm gonna shove bag five into bag six. So, where were we? Pulley. Push it through the large hole. Pull it through the small hole. And pulley. Push it through the large hole, pull it through the small hole, and now I have no pulleys left. And the reason that I have no pulleys left is that if I pulled any more on the spring, it would, uh, it would pop off of this end. So we don't want that. So that means that we have to go um, to the next part. So we have this part 
and we have this part. Now this rod connects these two pieces like this. And let me just get these blocks out of the way. And um, all of these uh, plates basically fit into these grooves. Now the springs, they go in here and they go into little holes just like that. Um, and they serve to give uh, this plate uh, two positions, spring-loaded positions. But the springs won't go in first. So uh, what we need to do is take this rod and put it through this hole. But, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't go in immediately. Um, it's actually pretty easy to put it in this one but it's kind of hard to go into here, even, even if I turn it around. So the thing is that you have to force it in, all right? Because otherwise, um, the distance between these two axles will not be correct. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to support this and just bang it in. I just wanna make sure it goes in all the way. And I think that's probably correct. I'm not sure. It may need to go in a little more. It's really hard to tell. Um, it's, not, it's not flush with the end, but it is kind of sort of flush with the end of the slot. Um, so anyway, we're going to try it. And if it doesn't work, um, we can uh, try it again. So the, um, the end of the spring hooks onto the rod. And then we should just be able to push these guys together, lining up all the plates. So they just sort of line up like that. Oops, I didn't get this aligned. Get that rod in there. Let me lift up this end. There. So basically like that. Um, and you can see that um, that does appear to be uh, the right distance um, because if you, here, let me move this guy down. Because if you look at this pulley, you can see that it is resting between the teeth of the gear. So the gear has this nice. Um, positional setting, this uh, detent. Springs. Blink. Oh, crap. So, but the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into the, uh, the frame. So, basically it goes in um, with the, these are the uh, intermediate gears, so they go on the top. And they go in these uh, little depressions right over here. So we can just put them in and fit them in. At least I think that's the way they go. I'm wrong. Sorry. My bad. The intermediate wheels go on the bottom side. And they fit in like this. So I suppose there's two ways that they could go. They could go like this, or they could go like this. But they do go like this, with the um, rod holding the spring on this side. Because there, there is actually, um, it wouldn't make sense for it to be over here, because then this gear would be over here. And well, I guess that could make sense, but um, there's actually a part here which is getting in the way. Oh, and speaking of this part, um, this, uh, this little part that goes up and down like this, um, I realized what this does is that every time, um, every time the gear cycles once, it actually increments the, um, the, the counter up here. So it rotates once and it increments this once, or actually like that. And if you spin it in the opposite direction, it goes down. So um, that's, that's one mystery solved, I guess. Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to put this right in here. Let me 
do just have to press it in a little bit. Okay. I think that's uh, almost all the way in. I think there may be a problem with this side a little bit because um, because it's not quite fitting in, so I may have to uh, bang this rod in a little more. So let me, let's see. Okay, so rather than um, bang it in, I just uh, used an arbor press to press it in. So I think that this should work. So I'm just gonna put it in. Okay, let me just raise the camera a little bit so that maybe there's a better view on this. I don't know if it's a better view, but uh, here, I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, so there we go. So I've got these seated in their half circles, and these are also seated there, okay? So now that they're seated, um, I can do a bunch of things. Um, let's see. So I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put the springs in. So the, the thing about the springs, uh, let's, let's start with um, maybe this one down here, and we'll see if I can get an extreme close-up of the spring as it goes in. Okay. That might work. So you can see, let's see, that there is this hole down here on the bottom. And can I, uh, can I move this a little bit? Like this maybe? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so down, let's see, here, right here, there's actually a groove. And there's a groove that goes in over here. So basically the spring goes in through that hole and then over here. And that allows this thing to, to have two settings, basically two detents, back and forth like that. So I need to put this, the spring into that groove and then compressed into that little diamond over there. Um, and I need to do that for all of these. So let's go ahead and zoom back out. Okay, so it took a lot of persuasion, but um, basically this spring is in and you can see its motion is just basically back and forth like that. So basically the idea is just, you know, to keep the spring compressed as it goes into those holes. So I will do the next set of them. So uh, that took quite a while, um, I guess maybe half an hour or so. I just couldn't figure out uh, um, a method to put these springs in. Uh, I just sort of pushed and pulled at them until they, they went in. Um, but as you can see, all eight of these, um, carry indicators, I guess I'll call them, carry indicators, um, are now properly uh, seated. Okay, so I think that the next thing is um, we're going to go ahead and start uh, taking the parts out of bag five. Um, probably, almost certainly, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to lock these uh, axles down um, with uh, bushings. So. Um, also, another thing that I noticed is that on this side, if I turn this, there is this, um, this gear on this other side. Um, so that meshes quite nicely. So, and we've got um, this lever over here, this lever. Um, I think, yeah, I think that if this lever over here is placed properly, um, it's going to go 
into the teeth right here. And it's going to serve as a sort of stop for the teeth. But I don't know yet how that actually is going to be aligned back and forth like this. Because um, it, uh, it just doesn't look like it can easily line up. So I'm guessing that there's probably something over here maybe that's going to help uh, hold this lever into place in place. Um, okay, so next thing that we're going to do is go to bag five. Neighbors neatly top their heads like the star atop our Christmas tree and all the toy bags are folded up and neatly pressed. The list are filed from bed to best, organized like it should be. So I'll wear the shirt you 